No mai hari mai, a welcome to this session of uh, virtual regional business orientation. Um, I've got Annie's just jumping in the room actually, that's great. So today we are going to be exploring Auckland City and we're going to have Fiona that's going to take us through the presentation. But in this session, you'll hopefully see the general demographic statistics of the region, what sectors the region sees as opportunities and the resources that it wants to build on. And you'll hear about case studies or projects that are current in the region. And then we can have a bit of Q&A at the end. So Fiona, I'll just hand it over to you and we'll go from there. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I am going to start immediately by uh, sharing my screen. Um, but hello to everybody who's here. And um, as I'll say throughout, don't hesitate to get in touch if you've got questions. We'd love to make contact with you all. So. Now, let's make sure we get this correct. No, not, it's gone there how it did the very first time, Fiona. How's that? There we go. It. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, great. Inga mana, inga mana whenua o tamaki makaurau, inga hawaiwha o tamaki makaurau, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Nō wai katoa hau, ko Fiona toko ingoa. Greetings um, to acknowledge all of the voices, all of the iwi of tamaki makaurau, all of you who have arrived or will be arriving from the directions of the four winds, uh, Greek, greetings to you all, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you all today. Uh, I'm Fiona Haiko. I work for Tamaki Makoto Auckland. Um, we're Tataki Auckland Unlimited, which is Auckland's economic and cultural development agency. I um, am delighted to be here. EHF has been a long-standing partner um, of Auckland Unlimited. And we are thrilled to be able to work with EHF and to support fellows um, who are coming into Auckland. Um, my job is to help that process, um, to create networks, to help smooth your landing and to accelerate uh, your connection to, to the Auckland ecosystem. So hopefully this presentation gives you a bit of an idea of who we are, how we operate, um, some of the challenges and opportunities for Auckland at the moment. Um, how we think that you can help us and how you can connect with us so that we can help you as you arrive and settle. And let's get to that. So first of all, for a bit of context uh, in terms of um, Auckland Unlimited, we're called a council controlled organization. So we're part of the wider Auckland council network. We're a local government agency. We sit slightly outside of the council proper, so we don't deal with uh, rubbish collection or uh, rates or things like that, but we, our focus is to help the economic and cultural development of the city. So we are creating a more desirable place to live, work, invest and do business. Um, and that involves working with people like yourselves arriving in Auckland. Um, our name We've recently been gifted Tataki uh, to add to our Auckland Unlimited. So Tataki, if you know of the haka, um, there's a person who stands out the front and leads, and it's that vision and the leadership that sets pace and drives performance. So our agency is um, tasked with being leading by example, being culturally exclusive, um, creative, and a very bold agency setting. Um, that ambition and drive for the city to really reach its potential. We are set up, we're a very large um, agency. We have a very broad uh, remit. We're set up in uh, Roku and teams um, and our core focus in all of we do is Tamaki Makoto Auckland. So we work in collaboration with partners to support businesses um, and key industries to attract foreign uh, direct investment to support events and to build a vibrant culture. So the four uh, areas that we have are investment in industry, um, which is very much the economic development focus and potentially is where a lot of you have interaction with us. Um, we have Māori Outcomes uh, Rōpū, who are focused on ensuring that we are delivering um, outcomes for Māori in, in Auckland. And then we have the arts and entertainment 
arts, entertainment and events team and the cultural organizations team. So there's a lot of programming and um, this is the cultural side of our agency and what we do. So we have uh, all sorts of uh, institutions under our wing, uh, the zoo, the Maritime Museum. We have uh, the Civic, which is one of our large theatres, uh, the Auckland Art Gallery I mentioned. So it's, it's quite a broad ranging um, group of organisations. Um, some of the other things that fit across both the cultural and the economic um, side of things. We run and are very involved in things like the America's Cup, which you can imagine really drive um, the vibrancy of the city. And um, one that we're very excited about next year is the FIFA uh, Women's World Cup, which will be hosted in both um, Australia and New Zealand. So that will be uh, big on the radar for us. In terms of how we operate, um, we align with a lot of um, Auckland Council um, strategies. Auckland is in one of the, the largest uh, local government body in the Southern Hemisphere. It um, came together um, over 10 years ago from a, from a group of cities and we've combined to be one super city. So it's a very large geographic area, um, one of the largest cities geographically speaking. Um, and I'll get to some of the population data a little later. So there are a few things that we align with um, and just in terms of how some of your initiatives or how um, you understand what we do, these sorts of things may be important. So there's an Auckland plan for development, um, which has a specific focus on the south and west of Auckland. So there's been quite a lot of analysis done in terms of the uneven, um, particularly economic development throughout the city. So a lot of our programs and our focus um, pinpoints those areas to ensure that we're, we're um, closing some of those gaps. There is um, Kia ora Tamaki Makoto, which is our Māori Outcomes Measurement Framework. And Tataki Auckland Unlimited is the lead agency for part of that part of that uh, initiative. So that looks to develop um, resilient and regenerative Māori economy uh, by supporting economic opportunities for Māori businesses and iwi throughout our region. Uh, te ta Taruke Atafi is Auckland's Climate Action Plan. Um, it is, Auckland has declared a climate emergency and this is a plan in terms of how the city is going to reduce um, emissions. Um, through the reduction target of 50% by 2030. Uh, you'll see later on that a lot of the work we do builds into these frameworks. And then um, the Auckland, the Economic Development Action Plan is where we are setting some of the plans in a three-year strategy about how we operate. So I think compared to some other jurisdictions in the world, um, we are less bureaucratic. There are uh, only two levels of, of government that we're dealing with. There's the national level and local government, which has some constraints for us, but also allows us to operate a bit differently. Um, and I would also say in terms of Auckland being a council controlled organization, we take much more of a commercial view and are looking to accelerate things as quickly as we can um, than I think a traditional council may. An example of how we work, um, and this is in the industry 4.0 space, um, we collaborate and facilitate connections. So it's a large region, there are a number of players. There, Callahan Innovation is a New Zealand uh, national uh, agency that charged with innovation. We've got universities, we've got employers and manufacturers associations, businesses themselves. And we take a lead on, in some of those areas to ensure that we're getting that cross integration of all of those stakeholders um, to ensure that we're minimizing crossover, creating efficiencies and helping things go as quickly as they can. So why Auckland? And here's, I guess, where some of the stats come into play. Um, we currently have a population of about 1.7 uh, 1 million people which is just over a third of New Zealand's population. We're uh, in, the, in the northern, uh, on an isthmus in the North Island. So it's the gateway to most 
uh, to, to New Zealand for most arrivals. Uh, Pre-pandemic and, and probably even more so at the moment, 70% of people who do arrive in New Zealand come through Auckland. Our challenge is to help them stay here rather than just to carry on to somewhere else. We, um, even though it's 34% of the population living here, we have a, a slightly higher share of GDP. So it's about towards 40% of New Zealand's GDP is generated in Auckland. Um, we attract about half of the foreign direct investment that comes to New Zealand here. Um, Auckland Unlimited and Tataki Auckland Unlimited is very involved in that work. And then um, it is uh, the headquarters for many um, of the either New Zealand's top 200 companies or the multinationals, um, well over 100 that are based here. We tend to see that multinationals who are looking at the um, Australasian region will look Sydney, Melbourne, and then when they look to, to um, open a third office, it's is it Auckland or is it Perth? Um, so we fall into that consideration set with Australia relatively often. Um, one, um, one of the quotes that you hear from Auckland quite a lot is tamaki heranga waka, tamaki heranga tangata, tamaki makoto. So Auckland the place where the canoes gather, Auckland the place where people gather, and Auckland the place desired by many. Um, we see this, um, I guess, embodied in some of the recognition that we've received recently. Um, the Global Livability Index, we um, consistently perform well. Um, in 2021, we were number one. I do have to sort of say, I think COVID and our ability to remain open played a large part of that. Um, and ironically, this year, 2022, um, the Lonely Planet has called Auckland the number one city to visit. So um, we look forward to welcoming you, you all when you do arrive. Um, we are, I think one of the benefits of, of where we are, and this applies to all of New Zealand, is the time zone piece. Um, working with the, the West Coast US, is it works very well from New Zealand. And then in terms of Europe, we can be working during the day um, and turn around work um, for the next day in Europe. We have two large ports, as I said, it's an isthmus. So we've got, we've got, we're surrounded by water. Uh, we've got West Coast and East Coast beaches and ports on both sides. Um, and we have strong infrastructure in terms of connectivity. Um, this is, has recently been, um, I guess, recognized with um, Amazon Web Services um, announcing a data center here, which is going to facilitate some of those connections even further and allow really great um, high-speed connectivity for businesses here. In terms of skills, um, we have we are shifting gradually towards a higher skill base with more people in high, more highly skilled jobs. Um, we have seen um, due to the due to COVID, we've had a, a slowdown in migration uh, in terms of work visas. Um, we're in a couple of days that will reopen and we will be attracting more skilled workers into the area as well. The population has uh, is forecast to reach 2 million um, in only about 10 years. Um, this has slowed down a little bit um, because our, our population was um, pre-COVID fueled, um, a, lot, a lot of the growth was fueled by migration. We will still see an increase, um, but potentially slightly slower than what is shown here. But as a growing city, and I guess we're at that sweet spot of between 1.5 million and 2 million people, uh, we're certainly seeing um, interest from multinationals now that are seeing Auckland as, as a big enough for um, them to consider, uh, whereas previously we were too small. Uh, we are a very, very culturally diverse city. Um, we have over 180 nationalities. Uh, it's not just that um, people come from all over, that, but we have a number, you know, 40, uh, over 40% 40 are born overseas, and then an even higher percentage of people are born outside of Auckland. So uh, it's, it's somewhat rare to find an Aucklander who's been born and bred here, um, which 
really contributes to the diversity of the city. A number of the companies we've worked with comment that it's a great city uh, for a test bed because of the diversity, because we, as New Zealanders, are very quick to adopt um, to new technologies. So we certainly see that as an opportunity for the city. A number of all our Auckland population speak more than two languages. Um, we have um, a large Māori population and growing, and we are the largest, proudly the largest Polynesian city in the world. So over 250,000 Pacific peoples from uh, majority from um, the Polynesian part of uh, Pacific, but um, a really broad representation and uh, a heritage that we are very proud of as well. So as I mentioned before, a growing Māori and Pacific population, this slide shows that over time, the proportion of um, this group is going to be, um, is growing and is going to become more and more important to us. That's something we're really proud of and something that we certainly see in our creative industries and our tech industries that the different thinking and the vibrancy and diversity brought by our Māori and Pacifica will really build into um, our future identity and our future opportunity um, for our population and for our companies. Over COVID, um, New Zealand performed comparatively well. Um, we've, we have had a very good um, a globally recognized COVID response. However, there have been some real challenges and Auckland has been dispropor uh, disproportionately affected by some of those challenges. So we've held three events um, to address these with business, youth, um, as key stakeholders from various areas of the, of the region to discuss what we need to do um, to help Auckland and Aucklanders thrive as we move into the future. We see the pause um, as an opportunity to really consider what we want Auckland to be and what we want to pursue for Auckland and Aucklanders in future. So the themes of these three events that have been held in 2020, 2021, and most recently last month um, are listed here. So there's, there's a really strong belief that Auckland has a role as New Zealand's global city. And for New Zealand to thrive, Auckland has to be thriving. For that to happen, we need to be reconnecting with the world. And that is not just Auckland or Auckland businesses going outwards, but to really understand the networks we have here and the connections from the population we have living in the city. So engaging with EHF fellows or with other migrants who are arriving, understanding how you want to help and what you want to be involved in and what skills you would like to be contributing is very important to us because we know that talent is here. Um, so part of the job of, of Tataki Auckland Unlimited is to make those connections and help to help connect and accelerate that work. It's very important um, as is being seen all over the world that we are att attracting and retaining um, talent here we have a very mobile population. So we have, you know, it, it is a tradition for New Zealanders to travel overseas and work and hopefully come back. Um, we, we welcome with open arms that experience and talent that is coming back. But again, how are we making sure that those connections are being made and that people are feel, feel welcome and um, embedded here to ensure that, they, that the vibrancy that those uh, experiences and that knowledge brings is building into the city and to, to our economy. Um, we have a, a desire to build genuine youth participation and engagement in some of these future problems and future challenges and future opportunities. Um, and I think the next slide will show some of the thinking that we're doing in behind that in the intergenerational space as well. Auckland City Centre has, like many around the world, um, really suffered. And so some of the work that Auckland is focusing on now is how we can um, build that city centre back and potentially take a different view to what it was before. So looking at that social and creative experience. 
we have a very unique co culture here with the, our Māori and Pacifica peoples, and we really want to um, boost that culture and heritage and to ensure that we are telling those stories um, and, and that those people are enabled to do that. We have um, a program and a responsibility around Māori business and economy. These businesses um, resonate internationally and have some really great stories. So we want to really help to um, amplify that work and to supercharge that throughout the world. In March 22, earlier this year, um, Reimagining Tamaki Makoto, Harnessing the Region's Potential was released by Koi2, which is a think tank based at the University of York, Auckland. This report's genesis was from Auckland's Future Now in previous years, and it sets out um, a view or some provocations two generations out. How do we want the, the city to be? What is the potential of the city? How could we make this happen? It's not a plan, but it's a, it's a challenge to people to think about how we can view the city. Auckland Tataki Auckland Unlimited um, is taking forward two of these, has adopted two of these recommendations or these proposals. Um, number two, a region of creativity and culture, and number four, an innovative region. So as we work through some of our priorities, we're taking those two provocations and really thinking about how, what we want to achieve and how we can potentially get there. And that will include um, a lot of interaction with stakeholders, new ideas and challenges to ways things are currently done. So I'd really um, invite you to have a look at this work. It's, it's quite a big piece of work. Um, and to think about if, whether there are areas that you can see yourself being involved in, and if there are, to get in touch with us because we'd really like to have those discussions with you. One of the areas of our economy um, that has been really hard hit, and again, this is, this is not limited to Auckland alone, but tourism um, and the visitor economy, so um, conferences and events and international students, has always been one of the biggest parts of the economy in Auckland. And as you can see here, when our borders closed, um, it really suffered. This um, will build back and as, as our borders reopen um, and the end of July is, is a very exciting time for us. Uh, as they reopen, we will see this industry come back. But again, in sort of referring to the last slide, how we want to rebuild that economy, how we support those businesses. And, and given the climate um, considerations of New Zealand being a faraway country, how we can look at some of the challenges around the visitor economy as we support this um, uh, industry to rebuild are some of the key considerations that we're looking at at the moment. So, um, I guess that's an overview of some of the work we're involved in. And what I would like to do is to focus on four, I believe, of the um, areas of focus for Auckland Unlimited, and, and particularly the investment and industry team. So they are the Māori economy and, and business, um, the tech space, the creative space, and then our Climate Connect initiative. Um, so. These are the, the four areas or the yeah, four areas that we are putting most of our effort in. And the final one I will touch on towards the end of the presentation will be our investment team uh, who work across those areas. So Te Ohonga Māori is Auckland's Māori economy. And it is, um, in addition to the population figures I spoke about before, it's about 9% of Auckland's GDP. So it's a growing area. Um, there are a number of um, well, six, over 16,000 businesses, and many of these businesses are very small. So SMEs, um, a lot of self-employment, and Auckland Unlimited is considering how we can support and grow this economy. Um, key, key sectors here are construction, healthcare, and um, logistics, uh, but as well at strong representation in the arts. Um, Past recessions and as well COVID, um, Māori businesses have tended to suffer disproportionately. 
Uh, I noted before that the South and West Auckland, there's a, there's a gap in terms of the economic development and, and many of these businesses are based in those areas. So we have a, um, a Māori business um, team um, who are focused on facilitating um, and supporting Māori entrepreneurship to promote op economic opportunity. Uh, we also have, we will have uh, in the next month or so, an investment specialist who will be working with Māori businesses to attract um, foreign direct investment into um, startups and um, Māori businesses who are ready for that next level of investment. We have a uh, Māori outcomes plan um, for Auckland Unlimited, and this is uh, wide ranging and reflects the, the broad range of activities we're involved in. So it, it, from Māori language in terms of uh, bilingual signage at a number of our venues and events um, to ensuring the, the culture and identity and values are reflected um, at, right through to youth and career development and ensuring that Māori youth are, for example, being represented in tech or some of those diversity issues are being uh, addressed and particularly um, ensuring outcomes for our Māori population. As a council controlled organization and part of Auckland Council, a local government body, um, we have obligations to um, Te Tiriki. So we're making sure that we're doing this and building that um, resilience and opportunity for our Māori businesses, artists and communities. We workforce and um, skills development is something um, that's very important to ensuring our economy thrives. Um, one of our examples is in micro-credentialing for um, particularly um, Pacifica people. Um, and this is to help as technology uh, evolves to ensure that some of these people are being trained in areas of, of jobs that are potentially at risk so that they are able to move into higher paid jobs or better um, employment um, so that in future, as their jobs shift, they are ready for that shift and change. So we support, we work with employers to support delivery and development of some of this um, skills uh, development work. At the other end of the scale, we also work to attract uh, talent into the city because we are aware that, again, and for example, tech, um, there is a gap at the, at the senior end of the market that we really want to um, close as quickly as possible, which includes training and development, but also um, attracting talent and helping to retain talent here. So we play in both ends of that spectrum. Uh, looking at the numbers in terms of tech, um, we have a large number of tech firms in, in Auckland. We are the hub for tech here. Our GDP for the region is 13.5 billion and it's, that accounts for over 55% of New Zealand's tech sector GDP. Uh, you'll see as well in the creative space, we, we, are, um, we represent a lot of the GDP for the country. I think if you consider that New Zealand's GDP is often quite primary sector focused um, and Auckland doesn't have a very large primary sector, that tech and creative and some of those really weightless exports become really important in this city. Uh, we have 119 of the top 200 firms, 70,000 people in, are employed in tech, which is a, cons a considerable proportion when our population is only 1.5 million. Uh, and there's strong ties, so revenue from outside New Zealand, um, there's a strong sense of global um, connection in this area. As I mentioned before, we are seeing um, New Zealand and Auckland are on the radar of some of the large tech companies around the world with data centers being positioned here. Um, I guess in terms of regional importance, that, that is, is considerable for us. So we are the, our tech firms are strongly export oriented um, with the key markets tending to be the US um, with about 30% exporting to the US the Australia, Australia obviously being close, about 20% to the, uh, to Australia, and then another 15% or so to Europe. In terms of um, our tech and innovation communities, 
we have quite a large ecosystem of um, spaces and places that we can connect you into. So in addition to these, which we run and manage, um, we are very well integrated into the academic institutions, um, into incubators, and are very happy to facilitate introductions for you uh, there. These are co-working spaces at Grid Auckland. So the top two in the bottom right corner. Uh, so Grid Auckland has a, um, so LISAP building on the top left is for the very new stage startups. Um, and there's a lot of support um, offered to companies there. The next one in the middle at the top, which is Grid Auckland again, uh, tends to be for companies who are starting to scale a bit more. And um, so that is still in the same precinct down um, in what we call Wynyard Quarter. In the same building, we have Grid Auckland Futures, which is a space that allows um, for three free thinking and, and workshops and we're able to, to help you to um, provide space um, to, to work with people there. Click Studios is relatively new on the bottom left there. It's a co-working space in West Auckland where there's a, a large concentration of um, tech and creative um, businesses. So it's for, it's targeting entrepreneurs, creatives, artists, game developers, programmers, and filmmakers. And it's set up with um, the technology that, you, that some of those businesses need, but may not be able to access of their own accord. Outset is Outset Ventures is a deep tech space in Parnell, which is right in the central city. Again, um, enabling businesses to access some of the, the, the gear that they need to explore as they grow. Uh, Grid Monaco is similar in, to Grid Auckland in that you, it's a co-working space with support and programs for startups. Um, it's based in South Auckland, so it's not in the city centre, and it's part of our initiative to support the communities in those areas. We are currently working through a tech and innovation strategy for Auckland, and um, that will be released very soon. Um, I think once that is released, it'll be a great platform to engage with you on. Uh, we're, we're looking at how we build the ecosystem. And I think a number of people who come through the EHF program have very strong connections, uh, networks, knowledge, deep knowledge, and experience in that, um, that ability to, to advance and accelerate that ecosystem development. So our ask of you is, we would, we're looking for talent. We would like um, to build networks and to get to know you, to connect with you, and to help build that Auckland ecosystem in the tech space. Our ultimate, opportunity, our ultimate outcome is to create jobs, attract and sustain talent, and to eventually, um, with a strong industry, uh, attract investment into Auckland-based tech companies. There's some great ideas coming from here um, and we hope to share those with the world. The next sector I'm going to talk to you about is our creative industries. So this is film, screen, uh, music, um, the, all, all of the aspects around film, including post-production. Post um, and this is something that Auckland is very strong at. I think Wellington likes to claim, um, but we, we like to um, demonstrate the numbers and sort of show that we have 46% of New Zealand's creative industries here, sorry, creative businesses here. Over 50% of the creative workforce is based in Auckland and 51% of the creative GDP is attributed to Auckland. We're a UNESCO city of music and um, I think it's not a particularly well-known fact, but the, the vibrancy of the creative ecosystem in Auckland is something that makes living here a, a real pleasure. I think the, to delve into screen a little more, um, probably in the next month or so, we'll see the um, rings uh, we've had Lord of the Rings, but the, the TV show is about to be launched and that it was all filmed here, um, majority um, once over COVID. So we're very excited to have that um, taken to the screens. 
but the production and post-production piece in Auckland is very strong. Um, we have film studios here, and I think where a lot of New Zealand companies pay a part is in that post-production space. So a lot of the um, post-production for productions out of the US or Europe is done in Auckland as well. So that's something that we're looking to continue to build. Just re uh, launched recently is our long-term roadmap for um, the creative industry in Auckland. Its intention is to grow the creative economy here. And it's an acknowledgement of the role that the creative economy plays um, in our regional identity and well-being. So it's not just the economic piece, but that identity and well-being being vital to who we are. Equally, there is an economic transformation piece. So ensuring that this industry is given um, real opportunity to be as strong as it can and to be as connected as it can internationally. Um, what I will do with this one is, because there is a whole strategy that backs this up, is I'll send the link um, in when we send this presentation so that anyone who has an interest in the creative sector can read through uh, the documentation there. We also invite you to connect with us. Uh, my colleague, Michael Brooks, details are on the slide uh, in terms of he is leading on that work. So if there are people who are interested in this area and, how, and contributing or finding out more, we would welcome that engagement. Some of the opportunities um, that will be considered through this work are noted here. Um, I think particularly for some of our creatives, working out how to approach new markets, how to attract investment, um, how to ensure that there is a process for building and retaining talent are all things that um, are being considered to, to develop this sector. This is, this is a standalone um, program that I wanted to raise with you in case people are interested in circular economy. Auckland, uh, Tataki Auckland Unlimited has run um, and supported X Labs. Um, so it's an economy, a circular economy um, lab for existing companies to work through a process to work out how they can improve their processes and become uh, more circular. Um, the companies who have participated so far are listed below, and it's a really broad, broad bunch of companies. We've got construction, um, uh, groceries, uh, building, but also sh children's shoemaker. So this, this has been a very successful program. Um, it will be run again. I know that they are running some um, online labs at the moment and there will be in-person um, in, in, a, in a few months time. So if you are interested in the circular economy or have an interest there, we would like to connect um, to understand what you're looking to achieve and very happy to share what is already happening in the city here. Hi, Climate Connect Aotearoa is our new climate innovation hub. So in line with Auckland's um, uh, climate uh, objectives, this is some work that has been developed. Um, it's going to be a physical space for an, and an online presence. Um, it's funded both by Auckland Council and um, I guess the operation of it is run by Tataki Auckland Unlimited. And we want to develop, demonstrate and scale um, climate, organi climate solutions. So it's not, I think there's often a, a, a view that government or local government is good at talking about things. This um, initiative is about doing and scaling and helping to actually create an impact. So uh, our team have put together this slide, which, which gives us a bit of an overview of what we hope to do. <clears throat> we are looking to deliver against the plan um, to deliver a resilient low carbon economy guided by our kaitiaki values um, that will support Aucklanders to thrive. Uh, the, this has not yet been launched. It starts, it will be launched in August. And our team are very keen to engage and to understand how um, 
they can be working with the likes of EHF fellows to deliver some of these um, initiatives. In fact, they've given me this slide, um, which looks at the areas that they're looking to focus in and how the potential they see for collaboration with fellows. So what, are the, what networks do you think we should be connecting with? And how can you, um, how can you connect into that initial work? What do you see as some of the challenges um, that need transformational solutions? And do you have solutions that you think can help? How can we share knowledge uh, and, and information in a meaningful way? Is there something you can tell us to help develop the system-wide knowledge and capacity, that capacity building piece? And then do you want to remain engaged with us? So these, um, Climate Connect Aotearoa has been modelled of Climate Kick in the EU and Australia and Lacey out of LA. So it's a bold move and we're looking forward to seeing the impacts that can be made. Um, and I know as a new team and a new initiative, we're very eager to engage and to, to um, take some of those best practice learnings where possible. To give you an idea of some of the work that will be going in initially, they are going to run some climate challenges. So around built environment and energy, I understand there will be a couple more of those. There'll be a digital presence launched um, in August, <clears throat> excuse me. And it, there will be a process of ecosystem mapping as well. So for people new to the area, and to understanding the work that's going on, this piece will be uh, incredibly um, valuable. This will be done in conjunction with AUT University and the University of Auckland, our two biggest um, uh, academic institutions in the city. Um, and I guess it, it talks to the closeness of how we interact with stakeholders around the region as well. So we certainly invite you to engage um, I know that many fellows are interested in um, solutions or, or, or ways of supporting um, sustainability and climate change solutions. So please do let us know if you would like to engage on this one. The next um, piece is, is our invest team. Um, so the, the purpose of this team is to attract investment to Auckland. Um, and that's not just capital investment and it's not just with corporate investors. It's our team's role is, is uh, to help people and to accelerate their settlement or their business ambitions here. So that includes uh, my role and my team in terms of helping investor migrants, EHF fellows and returning Kiwis to integrate into Auckland quickly and effectively and to help you uh, achieve what you are setting out to do. So we do have a team of investment specialists who work in a sector area and we also have a team of market specialists who help people um, to understand various markets and Auckland's engagement internationally. I guess some of the value we bring is that we help you navigate the Auckland Council ecosystem and um, which can be uh, confusing at times we're able to do that from within. So hopefully we can um, reduce some of the time taken to do that. We have a, a really strong research team who are able to do market analysis or um, to give you an overview of some of the demographics of Auckland, if you're considering um, an investment here or, or a new solution um, here. So the way the team works is, um, it's, it's at the moment very bespoke. And if you have a, a challenge or an interest or an idea, we invite you to approach us and we can let you know just how we can help. It's usually in the form of uh, introductions, information and insights. Um, we work very closely with uh, New Zealand government agencies like New Zealand Trade and Enterprise or Immigration New Zealand. So um, very happy to facilitate um, what we can at the regional level. In terms of some of the areas of opportunity for investment uh, in Auckland, uh, it, it, most of them relate back to some of the challenges that we're currently sitting, uh, sorry, facing. So we have um, the infrastructure in Auckland is just 
um, facing real growth. Um, as I've said, where population is growing fast, there's been underinvestment in uh, Auckland's infrastructure uh, in the past, and there are some really large numbers being um, vested in some of the core infrastructure for the city. So it's housing, um, we're currently having the central rail link finished, which means underground rail for a small section of Auckland, which is novel for us. Uh, we, there will be light rail to the airport. There's a second harbour crossing, um, which is um, still under discussion. There's a significant transport project. Um, so there's a lot happening in that core infrastructure space. The opportunity here is not just the capital investment, but we're looking for skills and new technologies and ideas of doing this, or ways of doing this. So our team help um, to facilitate some of those introductions. In terms of housing, it's similar, but the 320,000 dwellings will be required. Um, we're seeing huge development in the south of Auckland and in the northwest of Auckland. Uh, again, the traditional model of housing in Auckland and much of New Zealand has been a single dwelling on a largish piece of land, um, which has resulted in a, a huge geographical spread of the city. We now acknowledge that, that that can't go on. The city can't continue to spread. So rates of intensification, how we build um, you know, up rather than out and different ways of building are now being considered. So new construction methods, uh, prefabrication, potentially 3D modeling, uh, no, sorry, 3D printing. How can we bring new and different ways to solve some of the challenges um, that are being faced in the construction um, industry and to enable this large number of houses to be built in a relatively short time? Um, I touched on the fact that the, uh, the South is undergoing a large development this talks to that further there's a new essentially a new city going in um, to the north of the Waikato in the very southern part of Auckland that will have over 60,000 residents over 22,000 homes and currently there's a lot of work going on about what does what's the job um, uh, footprint look like there what sorts of industries will be going in so that is all coming on stream now um, so Auckland, is a, it, it's dynamic and it's changing very quickly. And as the Economic Development Agency, we see the real opportunity to help uh, create opportunity, particularly in some of those new sectors. Um, in addition to these three areas, um, we work, the investment team work um, in the food and beverage space and not just your traditional food and beverage, but nutraceuticals, plant proteins, and vertical farming are some of the areas of focus at the moment. Uh, and tourism is another area. So tourism infrastructure, but also tourism, as we start to think about it differently, what sorts of innovation can we support and what sorts of investment might be possible uh, in those areas? When we consider uh, locations and the impacts of the investment that is coming into the city. We are always um, cognizant of the south and west focus, but also of how we are helping um, our populations engage and benefit from this investment. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I would like to flag with you all is the, uh, the 2035 Oceania Summit, um, which EHF is involved in and very uh, integral, integrally involved in. Uh, Auckland Unlimited is um, a major supporter of this uh, initiative. It's in October this year and um, is shaping up to be a really engaging summit with a number of um, significant events in the margins. And I would invite you all to have a look at that um, and to consider attending if your interests are in that agri food tech space, um, because the the speakers, the panelists, um, and the surrounding activity really is um, looking promising. So from our investment team, um, as I mentioned before, the information introductions and insights are what we can uh, support you with. 
Um, and the sorts of things, property solutions or labor market and talent analysis are the types of things we provide uh, free of charge to all of our clients. So if you're considering opportunities here, you're starting a new business where you're going to be employing people, we can help to um, facilitate some of those introductions for you. I'm going to share my final slide, uh, which has my contact details, uh, and I will stop sharing soon. But what I invite you to do is to contact me if you are interested in any of these opportunities, if you're interested in connecting with us. Um, we will be developing uh, a program for fellows um, and other um, of us as other stakeholders, particularly investor migrants and returning Kiwis, to ensure that we are engaging with you frequently and there's an opportunity in the different sectors, uh, that there's an opportunity for you to learn more about the Auckland ecosystem and to learn about who we are and how we can help you. Uh, in early August, we'll be hosting an Auckland Orientation Day or a Welcome Day, and we would love to, so at the at the invitation of EHS, so thank you, um, and we would love to see you all to meet you in person to hopefully get you out and about and to experience some of those um, organisations or partners that we can introduce you to and actually take you and, and see some things. So welcome, congratulations, and um, we really invite you to connect in the first instance, it's likely to be with me, but the best thing for me then to do is to connect you into our specialists and those people who have that really deep knowledge in the areas that you're interested in. So we look forward to working with you and wish you all um, a smooth transition to New Zealand. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Fiona. That was absolutely amazing. I loved it. Thank you very much. And that date that Fiona's talking about is the 3rd of August. So that date's already been set. So that's the 3rd of August. If you're going to be in Auckland, we'd love to have you there. It's going to be okay. great. Um, so I will open up to Q&A, but I will just stop this recording. And thank you, Fiona. It's been fabulous. And we will be sharing the presentation and this recording with you all. So look out for it in your inboxes. Thank you.